It is now 8.36. It's time to bring in our Tuesday guest, and that's Nick Shaheen. He's an options expert. He's a market five maven and the author of... Good morning. Good morning, Nick. How you doing on this uh, Tuesday morning? I'm doing fantastic. You? We're doing good. So I... I just we were just talking about the G flash dash yesterday, but uh, I just want to get to you and talk a little bit about uh, sentiment. Uh, you've been having a lot of fun here on Twitter uh, with Apple, the Apple haters. You've been buying the stock, you've been taking a position, and they have just been coming at you real hard here. You know, talk about the setup that you saw, how you played it, and how you deal with all that Twitter hate. Well, uh, it, it, I do this, uh, you know, they, they say don't trade uh, with your emotions. Uh, I, I trade with other people's emotions and a few things. Uh, <laughs> gold is one, Apple is the other. And um, when it was approaching 700 pre-split, uh, everybody loved it. And then suddenly everybody hated it, all the way down to people even saying it was going down to 300 or 280, I think was the lowest call I saw at the time. And I said, okay, enough people hate it here that I actually like it. And I went long at the um, big credit put spreads, and it paid. And now that it's traced, um, what, 30% back from its high, mm -hmm. so maybe a little bit more at its low, and uh, people still hate it and make fun of it, and they think it's going to zero pretty much. So maybe it's time to go long, and I did. I took credit put spreads that are out in time. Well, you know, we have a lot of uncertainties here. We, we have a lot of question marks, China this, uh, oil that. But there are a few things that I, I, I know with a, a certain, you know, with a good degree of certainty. And one of which is Apple won't be 75 in the next few months without a major disaster in the market completely or a major disaster in it, which can happen at any point in time. And there's no one imminent. So doing a credit put spread that pays me 25% yield for saying that Apple is not going to be at 70 in the next few months is a no-brainer for me, to use Icon's uh, terms. Uh, so I did those. And I do know another thing, that if markets bounce, Amazon should be one of the leaders. So if I am optimistic for the markets, why not take some of the money I collect from doing a credit put spread in a, quote, sure thing or a certain thing and invest it in a few calls or debit calls, bullish positions in other things like things that are going to lead Amazon. It seems like Google still want to lead uh, and, and things like that. So this is what I've been doing. I haven't been fighting the current uh, options expiration. I do have an iron condor that expires this week. Uh, looks like it's going to go for maximum gain. But other than that, I'm just not playing the short term um, uh, spreads because of the uncertainty in the sentiment. But like you said, some things are too obvious and people are jumping on the same bandwagon in droves. And that's the time where if you start seeing people you don't recognize on CNBC or in the news saying the exact same thing, then maybe that thing has been around long enough that it's played out. So talk about the, uh, the uh, uh, you said it was a credit put spread in Apple. Tell us uh, the strikes that you use, the premium, and what, and basically, you know, what, the other side of uh, a wager that someone else made here on, on Apple going down quite a bit. Why don't you give us the details on that? Well, the, the easy one, uh, a July 75.70 credit put spread, which means you sell the 75, you buy the 70 put um, for July, uh, is uh, over 50 cents. Uh, at the high is probably, probably 75 cents, if I remember seeing it down there. So um, somebody pays you almost a 20% yield on the money at risk. Of course, if Apple goes through 70, you're, you're at risk over $4. But if you look at it that way, you won't trade anything. But if you look at it the way people look at, okay, what's my potential yield on this trade and what's the likelihood of me losing money? See, risk is twofold. One is how much money is at stake? You make that decision initially and then you move on. Okay, I'm going to risk 10000 5000 500 whatever it is. And then the second part of risk is what's the likelihood of me actually losing money? And that's the, quote, managed risk part comes into play. When that risk of incident becomes too high, then you have to defend or move or close. Uh, so that's how you manage your risk. So first, okay, the yield, potential yield on my money here is 20%, 25%. Uh, for me, it's a, a very juicy <laughs> um, piece of candy there that I, I couldn't resist. So, 
if I wanted to set one trade this year, that's probably the one I'll do. Okay. And, and go on vacation. Okay. And uh, Amazon, AMZN, did you get a lid? Did you go the the spread route in this one, or did you get a little bit more daring and uh, try and uh, you know just buy some outright calls? I haven't uh, bought any calls in Amazon um, yet. Um, I haven't bought anything because buying stuff hasn't paid up uh, unless you're buying protection on something like that. So I, I have not bought anything. I, I bought a few broken wings for the upside on the general spy uh, to um, bank on a bounce, and maybe they'll make me a few bucks today. But um, what a broken wing is, a bullish position, kind of like a, uh, a butterfly, a call fly, only where you span, you space out the um, the distance is a little differently, so it's easier to monetize for me. I don't like the regular flies; they're hard to monetize. So, where you, you buy a call, you sell two higher, and then you buy one above that. So the maximum loss is the money you spend up front, but it's a leverage profit uh, scenario. So if price moves your way, then you make you know four or five times the uh, money invested in it. Uh, but I have not bought any specific in Amazon. But if you are bullish the market, then why would Amazon fall? Uh, Jeff Bezos uh, seems to be hitting on all cylinders. I mean, uh, I think that Netflix is going to suffer greatly from the Amazon wins. Um, you saw it yesterday. They won a couple of awards. That's their third. And Netflix, I think, have yet to win anything. And uh, they haven't been at it long. And before you know it, he's going to be uh, cutting into Netflix's P&L. I have no doubt about that. One other thing to mention, Nick, about that spread that you do, that uh, credit put spread, is like, you really don't need Apple to go back to like 110, 115. <laughs> you could care less, right? There's no exactly. There's, That's, there, I there, told you, I know a few things, and I know that Apple. I can't tell you Apple is going to be higher. I mean, I don't have a lot of faith in Tim Cook that he can turn and, and deliver another quote iPhone. Uh, but I do know that the bowler is big enough that it's going to take a whole lot to stop this big money making machine and make it a disaster. Okay, so let me tell you this. If I tell you there's a house in your neighborhood, in a good neighborhood that's been reduced 30% recently and the house is desirable and if you buy it inside the house there's a safe with about 40% worth of the house's value in cash. Would you buy the house? <laughs> I've been looking. Yeah, I would for sure. My <laughs> argument. I'd buy it no sight unseen. I'd say sold to me. But that's what's <laughs> Apple. It's got $40, yes, free, pre-tax in, in cash worth and it's about a hundred under a hundred so it's over 40 percent um, as far as cash cut it in half 20 percent <laughs> it's still an attractive proposition nick i just want to go back to you know your strategy overall and you've said this before you like boring you know you like to just sit back and obviously you know you set up these scenarios where it probably is not going to happen and obviously then you write you know your credit put spread on those scenarios so, and I'm a big fan of boring as well. And we have, you know, a, a, on the chat here, they're talking about, you know, how stocks like a Bank of America G. I know these aren't really your style, but they're boring stocks to trade. But boring, and you know, is, is more predictable to me. And why I like, you know, trading stocks like General Electric or even, you know, Procter and Gamble or Bank of America or Exxon Mobil or some of these big S and P components is that they're liquid. I can get in and out of them easily. So you trade a little bit different style, and you trade some of the more uh, exotic stocks, but you trade them in a boring way. Just to expand, you know, on why you know you don't maybe get down and dirty in some of the really crazy stocks. Be because uh, the premiums don't allow me to do it. I have really good visibility on Bank of America and those stocks because they are heavily traded and liquid, but uh, I haven't developed a knack for it. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to find a range that's quote safe in credit spreads safe in credit spreads i want to find a range where people are not going to take the price and sell the risk there i basically want to sell insurance to somebody driving in the desert not downtown new york city so and it's um, it's hard for me to do it on a lower dollar stock where, where yeah. the premiums are too close together i'm not one to sweat the expiration if you know where the pin is on bank of america and we can get it pretty close you can sweat it into the expiration by selling uh, some sort of an iron fly there or something like that. But that's not my game. I'd rather sleep well and deep. And and the, the only way I can do it is to find lottery tickets that are not likely to hit and sell people those lottery tickets, like you once said, and, and uh, not worry about it. If I can deliver a 20% plus year 
doing this stuff? Why on earth would I want to chase prices? Well, let's jump into a couple analysis of some of these uh, other stocks as well. We've seen Twitter seems to go down every single day. It's now under $20 and 1965. It's getting a little bounce here in the pre-market 1998, but it just seems like every time this thing bounces 30, 40 cents, it's met with more sellers here again. Uh, same type of trade, GoPro has just been straight down here in 2016. Had the good first day, and then since then it's been straight down. Fitbit's been straight down here too. Really ugly 2016, really, from $30 all the way down to $18. Some of these stocks were loved for a while and they've been hated here for a while when do you think this trade starts to reverse when are these stocks cheap enough that they're oversold and you can come in here and safely try to pick bottoms i think people chase them let's use gopro as an example because sure. it was a really good extreme um and twitter for that matter they chased them for uh, and nothing happened too much time went between the chase and nothing happening to where like people gave up on it i lost some money on some calls in twitter because I had a hunch, and the hunch hasn't paid out. Well, it has a few days, <laughs> so unless they announce uh, in the next couple of days that they have an acquisition of sort, uh, that uh, lottery ticket is gone, I may re-up, because I believe in the platform, not in management. In fact, I believe so poorly in the management that they're going to be forced into doing something or disappear as far as price is concerned. So I may re-up the calls on Twitter, but it's a complete lottery ticket, money thrown down the tube, just like when you buy a lottery ticket. You spend a few bucks and you don't say, oh, I need to return it. You just buy it and forget it. If it hits, it hits. It doesn't. You lose the money. Okay, Nick, uh, let's take a look at uh, just the overall market here as well. Uh, pretty good sell-off over the last few days, getting a little bit of a, a pop-up here. I mean, geez, I mean, Chasing the S and P's up nineteen handles. I mean, it's a you know it's a tough strategy. You think uh, you think we might take another pullback here? Maybe get it back in the lower nineteen hundreds uh, before we uh, continue to move higher. Um, all along, we've had support, and the support lines have been you know last week there were a few people hoping for nineteen twenty five in the as far as the open interest in the S P X, and they got paid handsomely because we went down there, obviously. Uh, we still have support where we are, a little bit below, and we have magnets at 2,000. And not not meaning that we're going to get there, but it's a pretty strong magnet. It will be resistive if we get there. Uh, there are some uh, upward pressure points. Uh, 1925 small, uh, 1950 is another, and 45 ish is another SBX. I'm speaking. Uh, there's another one about 1973 ish. Uh, these are upward pressure points to help the magnet at 2000. Uh, so based on the open interest, we need to be closer to 2000 than 1900 this week. And uh, if you, if I had credit put spreads, which I do for expiring this week, um, there, the upper end is at 21. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember how high it was. 2140, I think. Uh, so obviously those will expire for maximum gain for me, which was a bearish position, but I also had a credit put spread in the 1870 area. 65 and that will expire for maximum gain hopefully uh, I did protect it a little bit but out in time so I can sell the protection today or tomorrow if I don't need it anymore but uh, yeah we need to be closer to 2000 based on the open interest than 1900 Nick what about oil oil goes down <laughs> every single day we're finally getting a little bit of a lift here today I mean I was lower this morning early on trade we were trying to get in breaching getting close to that $30 level there we've bounced here now but is this just a dead cap bounce or is there a sustainable <laughs> rally here eventually I mean I don't think anybody thought oil was going to go down seven straight days to start basically 2017 or 2016. I bought USO calls on a hunch that hasn't paid out yet it still has time on the clock uh, it was a February 12th, I believe, expiration, but um, I added a few lottery tickets yesterday on the low. I joked that I was going to buy puts and that would mark the bottom in, in oil, but um, it, it, it's a rigged game <laughs> fundamentally. Fundamentally, it should be probably higher, but who's to say that the 100 wasn't a rigged game also, and they were fleecing us for, the, for a few years, and now... Uh, it's how long are they going to withstand the pain in the OPEC countries as far as funding their own social um, calendar, social um, budget? Uh, yes, they can pump at five dollars or seven dollars and break even for the industry. However, their countries can't sustain 
uh, all the schools, all the uh, gas subsidies that they had there, uh, all the military efforts. They need money to fund that. So how long are they withstanding? If I was the president, I'd probably release uh, reserves here to drop the price even further and play their game. But I'm not. So <laughs> that's a good thing, probably. Uh, so... I can't tell you fundamentally where it's going. I don't know where the fundamental price lies. I know that the globe is not expanding the way we thought it was. And uh, so the demand is probably not going to get stronger suddenly. And if uh, if you can control the supply, maybe you can prop up the price a little bit. Um, other than that, I look at the open interest and it should be higher based on the open interest. So lottery tickets only for me in the, in the oil. I don't understand how people invest still. And I use the word invest. It's more like... Um, you know, gambling, closer to gambling than investing when you can't control the actual thing that uh, based on fundamentals. Yeah, and the news out of, you know, the slowdown in China certainly isn't helping things. Uh, we've been on the line with Nick Shaheen. He's an option expert. He joins the show every Tuesday to discuss this week's options outlook. He is also a market five maven and the author of Create Income with Option Spread. Nick, thanks for joining us. Have a good trading day. Remainder of the week. We'll talk to you again next Tuesday. Always a pleasure. Looking forward. Thanks, Nick.